AI-generated art, AI-generated songs, AI, what is that? Generative AI is a hot topic, not just in the tech space, but in many industries. Everyone is talking about how it will replace jobs or disrupt certain sectors. A lot of companies have embedded it into their products and new startups are emerging whose core products are entirely powered by Gen AI. We are currently experiencing the AI revolution, to say the least. AI companies keep releasing newer models with bigger context windows capable of processing larger tokens. These models have been trained with trillions of parameters and continue to advance with some now possessing multimodal capabilities. We keep hearing all the terms used to describe the models, but deep down, we don't really know what they mean. We pretend we do and we don't ask questions because we don't want to look dumb. That's okay. Many people don't understand all the terms used and that's the aim of this video. By the end of this video, you'll be among the few who truly understands what they all mean. We'll cover what an LLM is, what tokens are, parameters, context windows, prompt engineering, fine tuning, and much more. You'll not only understand these terms, but also know how they are applied in real world AI applications in relation to existing models today. If you've ever felt lost in conversation about AI, stick around. I've got you covered. All right, let's start with the basics. What is an LLM? LLM stands for Large Language Model. Imagine it as a super intelligent librarian who has read every book in the world, except instead of a librarian, it's an AI model that has been trained with a lot of data, not just from the internet, but from other sources as well. We're talking petabytes and petabytes of data. Whatever size of data you're thinking in your head, double it. This data includes blogs, news articles, videos, open source code, pictures, research papers, and more. Basically, any accessible data in digital format that you can think of. Because of the vast amount of data they've been trained with, LLMs have learned to generate human-like responses based on the input they receive. There are also AI models that are capable of generating pictures, audios, and videos. They are also trained on data from the internet, but those models are beyond the scope of this video. Today, we are focusing on models that only generate text. Some of the most popular large language models are GPT 3.5 from OpenAI, Gemini from Google, and Llama 3 from Meta. Now, notice I didn't say ChatGPT because ChatGPT is simply a user interface for interacting with the GPT models developed by OpenAI. You can build custom software to interact with any of the GPTs via API. The same is true for Gemini and other large language models that have exposed APIs. It is important to think about it this way because it opens your mind to the possibilities of building software and experiences powered by it. Now, let's talk about tokens. When you're on ChatGPT and you ask it a question, your question is perceived as an input and broken down into tokens. Think of tokens as the building blocks of language for LLMs. They are the basic unit of input and output in a language model. Instead of reading text word by word, LLMs read it in chunks called tokens. A token can be as short as one character or as long as one word. It's kind of like if you were learning a new language and you broke sentences down into smaller, more manageable pieces. The models generate output by predicting the most likely token to follow given a sequence of input tokens. For example, if I ask GPT-4 to complete this sentence, the wheels on the bus go, it could either say round and round based on the popular nursery rhyme or give another answer based on something completely different. It generates a response by breaking down the input into tokens processing them and generating a response. This helps the model understand and generate text more effectively. This is also how the companies charge for using their models via APIs. They charge in units of tokens, units of how much information is consumed or generated by the model. This is also why prompt engineering is important. I'll touch on that in a little bit. Next, let's talk about parameters. If tokens are the building blocks, parameters are the rules the model learns during training to use those building blocks. They determine how input data is transformed into output predictions. Imagine you're playing a video game. Parameters are like settings that control how the game behaves. Speed, difficulty, sound, and more. The more parameters you train with, the better you are. Similarly, the more parameters an LLM has, the better it can understand, generate nuanced text, and perform complex tasks. Although, more parameters require more computational resources. Models like GPT-4 have been trained on 1.76 trillion parameters and can perform complicated tasks involving automation, data processing, coding, and more. The next concept is context window. It's the amount of information the model can consider at once. Imagine you're having a conversation with a friend, but they can only remember the last few sentences you said. That's the context window. 
Larger context windows means the model can remember more of the conversation you had in earlier chats, making its responses coherent and relevant. All right, the final concept to understand before we put it all together is fine tuning. Even though models are super smart and have been trained with a lot of data, there's still some stuff that they don't know or things they can't answer accurately because they haven't been trained on that specific information. Not all data is public data. Fine tuning is the process that improves the performance of a pre-trained model for specific tasks or domains. For example, suppose I want a model to give better answers to questions about the internal workings of my company. To accomplish this, I can fine tune an already existing model with my custom private data about my company and the model's performance will improve for those questions regarding my company. That's it. It's simply making the model better for your use case. Now, in the race for AI dominance, companies have been releasing newer and more capable models. The major players in the game right now are OpenAI, Google, Meta, and Anthropic. For this video, we'll focus on OpenAI and a little bit of Google. OpenAI was one of the first companies in the game. They started by releasing GPT-3 on March 15, 2022. It had a max token size of 4,097 tokens, equating to roughly 3,083 words, meaning it was able to process inputs and generate outputs of 3,083 words. Next was GPT-3.5, which came in different versions. GPT 3.5 Turbo could handle 16,384 tokens, four times more than what GPT 3 could handle. It was also trained with 175 billion parameters. Next was GPT 4. It is capable of handling 32,768 tokens, which is an estimated 25,000 words. This is why you can throw in a whole research paper or an Excel file and you can easily process all that information. It was trained with 1 trillion parameters, making it capable of doing complicated tasks involving task automation and more. The context window was also increased with the release of newer models. This led to the rise of GPT agents that are capable of performing long-running tasks. As of today, the latest model from OpenAI is GPT-40. It has a higher token limit and a higher context window than GPT-4, but where it clearly stands out is that it's multimodal. This means it's capable of accepting text or image inputs and outputting text or voice as well. It also generates text two times faster and is 50% cheaper than the previous models. You can speak to it and it'll respond as if it were a person. It's kind of creepy, but very impressive. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm Mark. How are you? Oh, Mark, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? Now, Google has also developed a bunch of generative AI models. Their family of models is called Gemini. They are very similar, but differ in specifications. Now that you know what all the buzzwords mean, I'll let you review them on your own. One thing worth noting is Google also has a family of open source models called Gemma Open Models. They are built from the same research and technology used to create the Gemini models. The idea behind them is for people to quickly train their own models without starting from scratch. The final thing I want to briefly touch on is prompt engineering. Generative AI models are very powerful. They have been trained on so much data and are capable of doing more than we think they can. To fully take advantage of their power, we need to prompt them properly. Regardless of what LLM you use, you need to phrase your question properly and ask for the right responses to get the best result. That's what prompt engineering is, learning how to ask the models questions that generate the best result. There are a bunch of prompt engineering frameworks and they all differ based on your use case. One of the most popular is the rise or risen framework, where you give the model a role, who you want it to act as, then you give it an input, then the steps you want it to take, and finally, what your expectations are. Optionally, you can narrow down your results by telling it what you want or don't want in the generated output. Prompting it this way ensures that your responses are not generic. There are a few other frameworks that are helpful for more complicated tasks. I'll be making a separate video on prompt engineering soon, so stay subscribed so you don't miss it. That's it for this one. For those of you who are new here, my name is Uma. I am a software engineer and content creator. I enjoy learning and breaking down complex technical topics to make them easy to understand. I also work one-on-one -on -one with software engineers to help them learn and increase their earning potential. If you'd like to work with me, check out the link in the bio. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Catch you on the next one. Peace.